Soul Saga? Sounds like a pretty badass name, taking Dark Souls or Soul Calibur, then combining it with the Saga series. Spoiler alert, that's not what the game is about, but I wanted to check it out anyways. You play as a guild master, and as you complete quests, you recruit a ton of different characters to your guild and manage the day-to-day -day operations. Sounds pretty interesting, and the trailer featured one hell of an anime opening theme song. So can this JRPG hybrid pull it off? Or does it fall into the early access abyss of mediocrity? So you start the game and you are shown three slots. You pick one of them and then you can adjust your difficulty. They give you a good amount of things to play around with, so I appreciate that. I decided to keep things standard, but I learned I made the wrong choice. More on that later. So once you finish selecting difficulty, adjust all the things, the game begins as you're greeted by some exposition to the game and the world at large. Just gonna keep it a bit vague just cause the trailers didn't really say too much. Uh, the setup is fairly basic, uh, but the music during this is really good. Honestly, the music throughout this whole game is really good. Easily the best part of the game and you're gonna see why. <laughs> So once you finally get your airship, that's when the game really begins. You can start going on quests right away. Now the cool thing about quests is every time you start a new game, the order of quests change. So there's a bit of replayability there. So I got several things to say about the gameplay, but let's just start it one at a time. The controls for the airship are just not good. You use this to navigate throughout the quest to reach the quest location uh, and to collect resources to sell. And this is basically a majority of all the quests that you have to deal with. And I don't get it. There just seems to be so many damn indie titles that want to throw in airships and they always give them awkward controls. I played Black Skylands Origins um, a few weeks ago and that game had the same issue too of just the controls just not feeling right i mean this thing drifts all over the place it's hard to keep it in control especially if you're using the mouse the combat also has its share of issues as well so it's not just the airship segments and this is mainly due to the game just not explaining anything to you and just throwing you against multiple enemies right off the gate and you only start with one character and the game doesn't really balance itself around it. So it uses an action turn based system uh, similar to Final Fantasy 7 and 8. Uh, the bottom right showcases the current effect so this needs a bit of explanation. Basically whatever it's showing the next move you'll do it'll, it'll change it so if it's strong body or your bot the next body attack that someone does will be stronger if it's a strong soul then um, the magic attack will be strong and weak body weak soul same thing etc etc this is completely rng and it can really fall against you especially if you're against one to if it's like a 1v5 or something like that because once they get like something that benefits from them like a strong body and hits you with it you're basically done i also wanted to let you know that character placement is very important since friendly fire is a thing i accidentally took out one of my own characters and i didn't even know that was possible there are a ton of characters to collect but currently only six of them are playable at the moment to be fair, they all are pretty unique, so it would be pretty interesting to see all these characters get their own playstyle. Would like to see that. You can also delegate other members to gain experiences and resources. And honestly, this is really the only guild-like thing that you can do. There's not a lot of management or simulation that really goes on. So the main way you get money is to complete these quests and report your progress or sell your resources. Since I kept crashing, I couldn't bring any of them back and that's because I checked the box that you lose items on death which is checked by default. Um, so there are things you can buy like potions and revives. Uh, potions are very important. Both of these are very important. Because there's really no way to heal yourself outside of those things. Um, you can also buy equipment to upgrade uh, your stats. Uh, but it's just so negligible. And there's not an easy way to compare what is better than what. Also the shops run out of stock. So you'll eventually be forced to go to sleep and restore your health. Which, like, which moves the day forward. I'll get into that a little bit later. You can also buy upgrades to your ship. I would recommend that you upgrade the engine to help avoid obstacles as quickly as possible. That will help you just get through the game and make things a lot quicker. So every time you sleep or die, a day goes by. Eventually, as time moves on, the three monsters that are in each corner uh, will start moving and start blocking off quests. So you need to be as efficient as possible. Get as many quests as you can get done in one day, which usually boils down to one, at least on the normal difficulty. It really is difficult to complete more than one quest um, just on the normal difficulty. 
combat was already hard to start with, but it got even harder, especially with how resilient the enemy becomes and how much of a boost the hit points they get with each quest. I was struggling with monsters even when I outleveled the recommended quest level by at least two levels. It just was not fun. So with the constant dying mainly due to crashing, I eventually started over and scaled the difficulty way down and I was actually making progress much better. I still crashed a lot, uh, especially in the later quest when they got turrets and multiple monsters roaming about. I mean, the later quest is ridiculously like unbalanced. Like it's it's nuts just trying to navigate. So combat was much easier, but it still was a chore for some enemies. Enemies still took a ton of hits to take down, but the good thing is they couldn't dish out as much, so I wasn't going down anymore. But after that, I just found out the game was just plain boring. There's not much to really do outside of the normal loop of going to get a quest, eventually they'll join your guild, and that's basically it. You can also collect songs for this guy in the marketplace, but that's really it so far. I mean, it's still early access, so there could be more on the way, but I'm just not sure what to expect. You also have these war bosses that appear in completed areas. You land in this place on the map and then you traverse uh, with walking instead of using the airship, so that's a plus already. But they all play out the freaking same with random encounters and a boss at the end. It's Once you go through it once, you never really want to do it again. You'd rather just delegate your people there. It, it serves no purpose, except to get extra experience and maybe a resource at the end. So I wanted to play until I come in contact with these three monsters just to see what would happen but I gotta be honest, when I saw how many quests I needed to do and how far it would have taken me and how long I would have needed to put in, I just, I gave up. I just lacked the willpower and I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to end what I felt like was my suffering. So let's just wrap this up quick. I don't recommend this at all. It's far too flawed and it's just plain boring. It doesn't do much with the concept of being a guild master, and honestly, I have no clue where this is going to be headed. The developer has had a bad track of uh, has a bad track record of keeping updates, from what I've read in the reviews for this game, and from Kickstarter backers. Another thing I forgot to mention: this was actually backed up by Kickstarter. Who knows about the future of this one? And because of that, just steer clear. There's better early access games out there. And honestly, you could be doing far better with uh, spending far less money. So thank you guys for watching this review. Apologies that this wasn't a good game, but it is what it is. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. And this is Powerhouse, signing off.